What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the podcast. This is episode 267. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to our sponsors for today's episode, Post Baseball Academy. Uh, as you know, baseball season is here, and it, or it's right around the corner for some people. So if you want to enroll your kid in, in a, if you're a surrounding town and you don't really want to go to Lubbock, you can go to Post Baseball Academy. Uh, right now, they are actually looking for 14 and under Double A players to do some local and travel tournaments in this uh, spring and summer season. So I also have an indoor and outdoor facility and you can contact Roy Perez at 806-474-9565. That's my father, by the way, to enroll your kid, teach them some baseball, teach them some softball, the fundamentals, let them be out there and interact and learn how to work the great game of baseball. You guys know I love baseball. Um, our guest for today is Ozzy Santos. Shout out to this kid. I love him, man. He's been on a conversation pit before, and now we have him on the snake pit. We talk about all sorts of things. He's uh, also a yoga instructor and a wedding officiant. So if you want to get involved in either, either of those things, I suggest you hit up Ozzy, man. Other than that, you guys can uh, support the podcast in a free way by subscribing to the YouTube channel. Uh, that's the best way to help us or you can subscribe on apple Podcasts, spotify hit that rate and review you can share this post anything like that would help us and it's free we are also on patreon patreon.com slash snake pit studios where we do conversation pit conversation pit every week uh that's a dollar right now so get it while you can getting while the getting's good and uh it's another way to support us i still have some merch available if you want that other than that, check out Lords of Film. They're going to get real active very soon. They're doing movie nights. I believe March 20th is the next movie night. And uh, if you're free this Friday, go check out our boy Chase at a uh, 5J Gallery. He's, he's got his own gallery, so that's pretty cool. That's uh, tomorrow, the 1st of March. Other than that, thank you guys, and I hope you enjoy the episode. Thanks, Dan. Looks good. Show off. Yeah. This is for you, man. We're your first ever <laughs> guest with these. Nice, nice. There won't be upgrades for a little while, so here's yeah. my energy. Unfortunately, the next upgrade cost me about five thousand oh. dollars. What is it? Cameras. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that, the only thing. That's a big one, though. Yeah. Good goal. Yeah. How long until we do it? <laughs> next year. <laughs> yeah. Good goal. Oh, for uh, sure. Unless you guys subscribe to the Patreon out there, listeners. We're here with Ozzy. You were on Conversation Pit. What's up? We liked you so much. We wanted to bring you on here, man. Oh, you make me feel special. But yeah, that was that was that was the hope. It's that, a good time. That was the hope. Yeah. You are a very interesting, man. You like a lot of. You and Bradley hit it off on the music, man. Dude, I know. Are, are, are we going out now? Like, I. It was hard to. <laughs> Dude, I know. I was like and, immediate uh, eye contact. I'm like, are y'all gonna kiss? <laughs> are you? Uh, is that a Hydra thing? Sorry, I didn't mean to. What? Oh, your, oh, on my on your U.S. Army. Oh, should I already drop this plug, dude? Should I drop this plug? Um, sure. <sighs> okay. Um, so have you guys heard of Maps? It's the mm -hmm. uh, multidisciplinary association of psychedelic studies. Uh, they do dope dope work in terms of like you know just trying to expand people's knowledge and like talk about safety first mm -hmm. because people are going to do it anyway you know what i mean um sorry i had to sync it up my bad oh you're good and uh so my buddy devin phillips d phil he he works for them and uh he kind of goes around giving these speeches regarding psychedelic studies and this is actually a jacket from him uh and on the back it says can i stand up yeah do you think you'll see it it says pretty girls test their drugs Lean down a little bit. that's fucking hard there you go heck yeah dude. can you read it can yeah it? pretty girls <laughs> test their drugs pretty girls test their drugs uh Pretty boys test their drugs too. Yeah, I guess people should in general. Huh? But yes, this is Hydra. This isn't it go per <laughs> do do <laughs> doesn't it go perfect on this like U.S. Army jacket? It's sick. no, no, no. <laughs> hail Hydra, hail Hydra. Okay, sorry, I had to throw that out there. No, I was so glad. I don't even. Oh yeah, we were talking about my love. Um, <laughs> my love. Yeah, we bonded on music, man. It was so easy to appreciate, and I love that you make time to go to concerts. Oh yeah. How much are you into Buddy Holly? 
Do you forget a name? Because we went to his grave Saturday. I'm going to be honest. I don't know much Buddy Holly. I don't either. I'm just throwing that out there. Cause I don't know much Buddy Holly. It's a big deal. Day music died. There yeah. was really nobody out there. I know. I was, I was surprised about that. You were thinking there'd be someone every day? No, on that, on that day. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. He, that was, is. he was on a list. Uh, Y'all watch Watch Mojo. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a list that came out most visited celebrity uh, grave sites. He was on an honorable mention. Hmm. Oh, he was an honorable yeah. mention. So, oh. I wonder how they keep track. Who was number one? Uh, who was number one? It was like Jim Morrison, Jimmy Hendrix, or someone like that. Look, I do love Watch Mojo. Just thought about this. Oh. Those are pretty cool. What is that? It's just top 10 whatever's top 10. Wow. It was, I think, it's usually movies. I think X was X, 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 yeah. So, you ever get into him? X, 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 Tentacion, X, 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 Tentacion. Mm -mm. He got shot and killed. What was it? It was like 21. It was a a rapper, yeah. That's a rapper name. (laughs) If I had to guess, it would be a rapper name, yeah. It's kind of sad, actually. Yeah. It's kind of crazy, like when you think about now, if somebody famous dies like that because he was in the public, they record it so you can watch the video of him Ew. basically dying in his car. Awful. It's really awful. Have y'all ever seen this photo? It, it, I just remember. Yeah, that. we we've talked about this before. Have we? Yeah, we try to watch a video. What is this? So this is Jim Morrison's grave. Someone took a picture by it, but right here it. People say it's Jim Morrison's ghost. No way. I'm still rocking on. Well, showing still off to the camera. The same hey, that's a good segue into like, what is, that, is everyone on the ghost train? Like everyone kind of believes in ghosts here. I do. <laughs> we usually talk about it at the Why? end. Why? But... <laughs> have you had an encounter? I have not. Or well, you believe in the paranormal? The closest I ever did. There was one where I was like, ooh, this is unexplainable. Um, Ouija board. Okay. You played with them. Ouija board? <laughs> yeah. You're like, why, bro? Those things scare the shit out of me. Man. The I only thing why. I ever felt when I fucked with the Ouija board is I was like, I had to be like 19 or 20. I mean, my friend had her hands on the planchette. You know how you're supposed to like be like lightly touching it? Yeah. yeah. I, I swear I felt tapping under my palm. But yeah. it never moved. Never moved. Yeah. But I could feel like something, like a energy under my palm. For, for me, that was like three of us, right? So uh, no, no, that was a total of four. It was me, this other dude, and these two other girls. And this was probably like 2016. Yeah, it, was, it had to be like seven, eight years ago. But uh, the, one, the un- one unexplainable moment was like, we had already did whatever was necessary to like turn it on type of thing. And you know, it was, it was moving, it was fine. And at one point it stops. And I don't wanna add to the story. I don't know if it stopped at like a no or like it answered something particular, I just don't remember. But like when it stopped, I was like really trying to move this thing, like putting forth effort to move into this thing. And I know I was the strongest person there and there was no way that anybody else, like it would take a coordinated effort and like a perfect one to like stop me from moving this thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it didn't move. And I was like, hmm, we should turn this off. Uh, (laughs) Fuck, man. But that was like, that's the closest. Cause I just, I, I tried, I tried really hard, you know. You know, man, we have had a lot of talk about paranormal experiences and unexplained experiences. And what I've gathered is <laughs> if you put, if you open your mind to it, I think it's real. Mm-hmm. That being said, me growing up Catholic, I will not touch a Ouija board. <laughs> I will not. There's a one thing. I, I was going to uh, Palm reading. Like the, ter- what do you call them? Uh, tarot, yeah. I will not, will not, will not, or maybe will something not. Else. Do Palm those. reading. No, uh, I meant the tarot. Uh, That's uh, okay. what I meant. Have you I held the not, cards? I will not do it, man. The, the cards read? Yeah. I'm absolutely terrified yeah. of it. It happened today. I don't like I don't tarot cards don't don't necessarily like invoke anything in me because I feel like it's almost like um it's like a horoscope. Like you can use it for like maybe like guidance for yourself, you know what I mean? If you wanna like take it with a grain of salt and maybe to a apply it to a, a situational thing that's going on and just see it for the metaphor that that card is or no. those cards are. But like there are some people that put just like a lot of belief into it and they'll make like life choices off of that shit. But I've never like felt, I've never like categorized tarot cards as like something like inherently like spooky. 
Like I Catholic don't know. guilt in me, man. They got well, me. Well, I mean, I grew, up, I grew up Catholic t- as well. You me know too. what I mean? And um, one of my scariest experiences was in a Catholic church. I've told you about the, the pews. You know what I mean? But it's just, I don't know. Like, that has never seemed like witchcraft to me. Because oh, it's God. like, if that was witchcraft to me, then I wouldn't be into like unicorns and shit. Like, well, I, I used to like collect unicorn statues. My parents like weren't like, I remember it, so. when we made our sacrament. I think it was communion uh-huh. and you had to go to confession and they give you a paper on like the, the 10, 10, the uh, 10 commandments. And in it, it says, did you play with tarot cards or a Ouija board? And uh, it, that has stuck with me forever. And that's like, so funny. Oh, oh, like, I don't know, man. I feel like a lot of the Catholic stuff, like the rituals that they do, it's very witchy, which, yeah. Oh, I for guess sure. You could say. You got it from like, and that's like, I feel like that, that could yeah. be, I just yeah, like all religion, sure. you know what I mean? Yeah. All religion, all things like that. It's just essentially like the gathering of energy, pushing it out or whatever. Yeah. And but, then, um, as St. John Newman, I, I'm, we might have talked about this already. St. John Newman, uh, in the altar, they say that I guess the Vatican sent them an actual bone. All all altars have that. Yeah, there's like an actual bone from St. John Newman. Uh, Dope. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, there's a word for it. I can't think of it. That's metal. But but I've seen churches where they have like displays and it's like real bones. Of, it's a relic. That's yeah. I guess it's just a relic. Yeah, so you know what, ghosts? Yeah, yeah, I'm down to believe it. I'm down for paranormal stuff. Yeah, the whole reasons behind it and stuff like that, I think we could all have different perspectives. But you've never had other than that one? Other than that, no, Dude, no, no. we've had so many in here. I'd be open to it. I'm so open to it. I either want, before I die, I want like that, or I don't know if I'll push the bounds in that space. Like, do I go to a haunted like hotel and like sleep there? But the the next one would be like, just seeing an alien, like just damn. We've seen both. We've that. done both. No, yeah. but I would say here's what I would say because I'm gonna tell you the story of the one that freaked me out the most. It's when you're not trying to conjure it up. Does it happen? Yeah, I think. I don't know. So one time, me and Brad Bradley were sitting right here, and this fucking white orb, like you could see this white orb just come this way. I'm down, dude. I'm and so I, down. I just wanted to pretend like it didn't happen, but I looked at Bradley. And Bradley saw it too, so I have confirmation. Was it on that, video? No, no, it wasn't. Oh, y'all messed but, up. But um, well, you can see us like looking over there. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, sitting there, and so I remember while we were recording, both of them went like they both <laughs> made that motion. Interesting. And I didn't say anything because I was in the middle of talking, and then after recording, I'm like, "What, what y'all see?" Mm-hmm. And then, what was it, like 30 minutes later, Roy had already broken everything down. We were getting ready to, like, say bye or whatever. And it was me and Bradley was across from me. We were standing across from each other. And then Roy was in between us. And then Roy just is like, holy shit. Like, he just reacts. And he saw the same thing coming up the driveway at us. Interesting. Damn. Oh, yeah. That video that I sent you a while back, it looked just like that orb. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because there's a video that you see like this uh, orb <laughs> just like running up onto like a porch in the middle of nowhere. It's like, that's what we saw. Fingers crossed. I'm trying to see it tonight. Shit. Yeah, I'm- I think though, see when I think when you do <laughs> stuff like that, you get more of a darker version of what we like. Uh, for sure, for sure. I think it's more of a. Yeah, you open uh, it to it all. I think so. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I don't, you know, I don't know what's beyond our our own. Danger is my middle name, dude. <laughs> I ain't Danger. gonna lie. All right, man. I, I, you. It's not, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just like I don't I don't play like that as much anymore. I'm a, I'm a good boy. I, I ain't gonna lie. I feel like um, recently, I feel like I really believe I saw something, but here, not here. Um, it was actually outside of my house. But like I saw it, but I didn't like react, like wasn't scared to it. It was like, oh, well, that just happened. But what's weird is the house that is behind my house. So someone commits suicide. The house next door to me, someone drug overdosed. The property behind me that's empty. Someone was found dead there like a few months ago. I remember. Yeah. You got some bad energy around it, though. I, I was, I mean. That's, that's some, that's some not so. Some heavy ass. Yeah, yeah but, for sure. And uh, I'm saying you're going to call something up like that. 
Well, <laughs> take, take the Ouija board over no, there no. to the perfect trifecta oh, point. You're just going to find I, Ozzy in your alley? <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say... No, I'm playing. I'm not doing that. I, w- <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say my property is good energy, but outside, it's, it's I don't know, yeah. something... Uh, you do well, know. You just said it. it. Okay, so my <laughs> great great grandfather actually died in the room that I sleep in today. Oh, so yeah, but and there's been like times protection. Energy. There's been there's been times I feel like I I hear noises and I'm like I don't know what the hell that was, but well, no, nah, I think it's good. <laughs> 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 that's Gra- the best thing to do is ignore it. Yeah, Grandpa's protecting though. You good? I I have heard my name be called out before. Fuck that. Yeah. Fuck. Why are you just so casual? That is so much worse than whatever you're about to tell well, us outside of your house. Do you want me to bring the Ouija board, bro? Nah, no, I don't. I'm just. <laughs> mm. um, I don't have it anymore. But I mean, this was already a while back. Like a long time ago, um, I was wa- I was washing my hair. I was <laughs> by myself because everyone was out of town, and I and I seriously heard someone yell Bradley, and I was like hello, and then nothing. I just I, I never thought about it again. I like it. I like so, it. Yeah, I, I never heard mean, anything. I wish I could just brush it off. But I don't know. To me, it sounded like my name was called. I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell. I mean, you know like your a, name. I don't know. I just heard something. <laughs> I just heard something. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, know if it was. But I don't know if it was in my <laughs> head. <laughs> I don't know if it was in my head that I thought clip someone it, yelled my it, name. Clip it, Bradley, Bradley, Bradley. <laughs> He's gonna break uh, up with you, Bradley. Come on, now. you gotta get on your no, game, brother. No, no, no. I'm here to protect you too, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um. I know as a kid, I for sure saw something. That's for sure. I was in a house in Austin. Yeah, oh. I was in a house in Austin where some family members were living at. And uh, I remember being a kid. I couldn't sleep. Uh, we were sleeping in the living room. Well, there was like a hallway that had a staircase going up straight. But as a kid, I remember seeing a shadow like just at the very top. But I didn't react to it. I don't know. I just, I feel like I don't know if I see things like that. I'm just yeah. like, oh, okay. <laughs> There's that. <laughs> I, I've been on a bit of a horror thriller kick uh, lately when I watch stuff. And I hadn't been watching things for a while. But uh, how do y'all feel about the genre of like horror and thriller and well, stuff? You're talking to the right people, man. Sure okay. the fuck are. Okay. okay. <laughs> so obviously that's like a big umbrella in terms of like there's gore. Like, and sometimes gore is just the, like, sometimes they're just being gory for the sake of being gory. And like, I'm not a big fan. Terrifier, of, man. Not, Terrifier is a good movie. Yeah. <laughs> Watch that one. For a gore. Yeah, it's right. nasty. It's got one of the gnarliest scenes seen I've it. ever but seen in my life. But it's almost like, it's, it's such, okay. Is it too much gore? Yeah, yes. it is. I'm it's good on overkill. That, yeah, I'm good. It is gory. It is ASMR gory, but it's almost so ridiculous. It's funny. So okay. when these brutal kills are actively happening, you're kind of like, are you serious? Terrifier 2. <laughs> Terrifier. So, Terrifier 1 and Terrifier no, 2. No, number 2 has a, there's a scene when if you watch it, you'll, he kills his girl in probably the most brutal way I've ever seen a girl get killed on, on a movie. The, epis, the, the scene was like minutes long. But I like, I want, oh my God. What kind of horror do you Min- like? Oh my God, minutes? Oh, dude, it's it's oh, gnarly. and in the first it's, one, it's, I'm just uncomfortable. Now. Oh, the, yeah, first the first one, one. it's. it's <clears throat> oh. I will just paint the picture. No, you're good. I'm just kidding. Keep going. Uh, <laughs> a woman is hung upside down okay. by her ankles, naked, and a chainsaw is involved. No, yeah. it's not a chainsaw. It's a just a regular. Okay, regular a saw, saw is involved. Yep, that's that's gruesome. That's a uh, yeah. That's clip yeah. from the scene. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Grew. <laughs> that's your reaction. To watch it. <laughs> that's yeah, how, so that's how Roy is right now. What <laughs> what kind of so horror good. are you into? Okay, okay. So <clears throat> I I started. I I I've come to realize that there's this like oh man is he director or producer? God, I'm so bad at stuff like this. Don't judge me. But he, his name is Mike Flanagan, and he does a lot of like TV series on Netflix. Haunting of Hill House. Yeah, Haunting of Hill House, Haunting of Bly, uh, of Bly Manor, um, Midnight Mass, uh, uh, Fall of the House of Usher. Uh, anyway, every single one of those I've thought were fire. And I honestly think like stuff like that in a in like a seven part TV series, that's the best way to put like a story. 
together, you know, because there's only so much you could do in like an hour and a half or two hours in a mm -hmm. movie, you know, but highly, highly recommend. He, I guess he did this. That's a great movie. That is a good uh, modern I, I, is it really? horror film. Sure Speaking this of one. Ouija. Is it really? It's the yeah. second, it's, it's the second oh. one, right? Yeah, yeah. It's got a crazy twist. Speaking like when of, you find out like what the ghost is or what's the Spoiler alert. Speaking things. of who? Speaking of who? Oh, because we were Mike talking about Flanagan. Ouija boards. Uh, 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 or, or is that a Mike, a Mike Flanagan thing? It's like uh -huh. every like project that I guess he's been a part of. Okay, okay. That's what I was curious about. Interesting. Anyway, I really like that dude. Um, there's Ooh, yes. Gerald's game is great. Isn't that Stephen King? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yes. Man, maybe I should watch some of these movies if I'm like truly saying that Gerald I like everything King that he does. Great. Dr. Yes. Sleep. That's a good one. Oh, yeah. Dr. Sleep. It's the Shining sequel. Mm-hmm. Ooh, interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm so curious what his affiliation is with this, or does he just do the same thing? But anyway, I really like that guy. I like really, really like what he what he does to the point that I'm like following him on social media, and that's a big thing for me. I don't just follow anybody, you know. So that's oh, a this great is movie. a great one too. Oh, is that I where she's know? deaf? It's not on Hush. Netflix anymore. It's not. You, you can't even buy it. Okay, so this is one of the craziest home invasion films. She's deaf. What movie is this? Hush. It's called Hush. Didn't they do like? Where you're deaf, where you're blind. Oh, I'm so deaf. Then they to see do this. shit like that. Like it was like, all like the bird box. You can't see. Then they did this. You can't hear. Oh, is it the same people? So it's just one, like this weird um, form part thingy. There's oh. that also movie. It's called a uh, Don't Breathe. That where one. these people break into that house and mm. the guy's blind. Yeah, but he's like has like supersonic. Dude, but he's movie. a badass. That movie, the ending. Which one? This. I don't mean to be a spoiler, but uh, that's a TV show. No, no, the, the other one. The Hill House. No, the Hush one. Uh huh. Oh, uh, she gets hit in the leg. You know what I'm like, whoa, <laughs> it's gnarly. Yeah, y'all have definitely done more movie watching than me. I, I definitely brought that up with the right people. O I don't think I. I, think I don't Oculus. like Oculus. Which one is that one? It's, it's like the with one, the mirrors, right? Yeah. yeah. Are these like ranked or something? It's just I like guess. just different projects he's been a part of. Oh, okay. Oh. I'm telling you, bro, that TV series is so good. This one right here. Yeah, dude. It's on Netflix. Yeah, dude. Epi there's this Who's number one. Yo, dude, I wonder if that's the the Fort Worth man mansion. Remember, I work. It looks. No, it really. Come no, on, it really Come on, Bradley. Plug. Like He's trying to. No, it really he's trying to flex on us. <laughs> I'm gonna look it up. See, okay, I've never dude, watched I Midnight Mass. Loved that one. Isn't like it's number one, number two, or Midnight Mass, and uh, though I did like the Fall of the House of Usher and all the other ones, but yeah, those two. The Haunting of Hill House was great. Dude, though. there's an episode that's called like the Bent Neck Lady. I don't want to give away too much, no, I've but seen like it, yeah. that should be award winning. I'm telling you, I love that. Atlanta, Atlanta Georgia. Oh, uh, like in the scene where it's like constantly dropping. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Stop. 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 But yes, yes. that scene is so good. Yeah. Like, the whole building. No, that and the van scene. Mm -hmm. You know which I'm talking about. Wait, wait, was that the same episode? No, oh. the van scene. I think it was the funeral home at the okay, where the I'm sisters are arguing. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's like one of the scariest things I've ever seen. Yeah, I remember like that. Actually, like I was like, <gasps> like I like screamed in my house because yeah. it scared the shit out of me. And like how it follows, like it kind of tells, like you know, the the mother has some like already kind of more uh, like psychic abilities type of thing and mm -hmm. so she passes that down to her children and so her children experience it in certain ways they get called upon this house i'm not ruining anything um but as the tv series moves along like you follow each one of the siblings and like their experience which i'm like dude that's just such a dope like like it's yeah, it's, it's literally a drama but it's like a horror it's a it's, it's so an good. insane ghost story and i also think the cgi is just getting better because like there were a couple years where it's just like or it's, and it's also more affordable because there was like a couple of years where everyone that was just trying who didn't have like money in the bank, like it just wasn't believable. And I can't it, wait till it's like accessible for all of us. Oh, dude. I, it's like cut Bradley's head off or something. <laughs> shit like that would be cool. <laughs> that shit would be cool. It's still kind of funny though if it looks super fake and super entertaining. I guess if that's yeah, your direction, you want to take it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me and my, my buddy Morgan and probably Bradley, we're going to, I, I want to make a, Short film, very soon. Mm. Kind of want to have a horror aspect. Yeah. Have you seen the thing? No, I've not seen the thing. It's one of the best movies ever. It's just so good. I can't stop thinking about the damn movie. We watched it recently. Oh yeah, yeah. The, for the first time. No, no. no. But at their uh, showing, the uh, Lords of Film showing, they do. Mm. We they put it on. Boy. 
Where is that at? Oh, oh. At the Casp. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard of that. That's like super two cool. Two weeks ago? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Our next so one is next Tuesday. That's the that's the first screening we had where everyone everyone clapped at the end. Oh, really? That's yeah. Do you, you remember everyone clapping? I think people have clapped before. I guess I don't remember. People clapped at Mandy. I guess so, right? Yeah, I forgot about that. That was already a long time ago. So what, what, what were you saying? My bad. I'm I was just going to say the Casp is just dope. You know, I think that whole part of town and like the community aspect of it is so cool. Yeah, I think the city should pour more money into it, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Well, dude, why not? They it's do, growing. Yeah. And I love that more and more people are getting to know of it. And there's like different things that just go on in that area, you know, like you, you could find so much. Yeah, it's so fun. There's a show during the Super Bowl this Sunday. But oh, yeah. Raiders Axe. Uh, are they watching? it? No. Oh, like a music are you are you excited for the Super Bowl? Fuck yeah! Yeah, yeah. hell yeah, dude. dude. You know, man, I gotta flex this. You know, it's fucking craziest thing ever. Go ahead, flex Super it. Bowl. Patrick Mahomes, man. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Motherfucker used to live a block away when wow. he was in college. Well, possibly one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever exist it was right down the street from here where yeah. we record this podcast. But, like it's, and he's friends with Keenan Ward, who me and Bradley are friends with. Oh, uh, nice. So. I have to raise Keenan. I just thought about this. If I win in the 40 yard dash against Keenan, he said he'll give me Patrick Mahomes' number. <gasps> so, or okay. no, it, we'll FaceTime him. Is he for sure faster than you or something? I don't know. Shit. <laughs> have you, have he's a know? Division one athlete. So he's, oh, he's going he's to get you, bro. He oh, was. <laughs> have you seen his workout videos? He's been busting that. Hey, are I you, did a you, Peloton with like he does. Come on now. Bro, are you training? Nah, he's 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 a collegiate athlete. He's gonna be fast. He's he? training, bro. <laughs> he, he was, yeah, he's gonna smoke my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you're not getting that number. I'm quicker. For sure. I'm quicker. Have y'all seen? Think. I'm quicker than that. <laughs> Have you seen Atlanta? Have you seen Atlanta? The, mm. the Donald Glover. Mm-mm. Okay. Well, there it, it kind of it's like an alternative universe. Like it's weird. It. And there's a scene where Donald Glover, um, I guess my. If, it's a universe that Michael Vick never made a comeback. So he hustles people by doing a 40 yard dash. And so he <laughs> I remember that outside yeah. the strip club. <laughs> yeah, outside the strip club, Michael Vick races people for money. <laughs> oh my yeah. God. Is he in it? That's in it. No, it's, it's not him. But <laughs> <laughs> you should have told him it was him for sure. Oh. Uh. I've got I've got a fun question, but it might be a, a big thinker. Should I like Pause, yep. pause it right now yeah, and, and then you guys just think about it it's, i like asking people this because I, I think that it's a it's a good it's a good new little like lens of perspective where you're like huh so this is like these are the things that i prefer um so it goes how would y'all list your five senses from the most like you could create this list however you want like maybe the one that's most important to you to the least important or the one that's like the strongest or you're the most sensitive to to the least sensitive between sight, sound, touch, smell, taste. Mm. And, and we could think about that for a bit, unless like y'all already know out the let me, uh, let me just, let me uh, say this. The beginning of January, I got hit with a sickness. I don't know what sickness it was, but I lost my sense of smell and taste. Mm. And that really threw a wrench in my fucking life. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. I like to cook. Mm, so yeah. I can't smell. And, I, and then like some things I taste now, like cilantro, I'd always heard it tastes like soap to some people. Some people. Now it does for me. It fucked me. It took me. it away it from you. Me, man. It took it away so from you. I would say those are pretty important, given yeah. that I don't, I didn't have them for a while. And I'm barely getting them back. For sure. I've heard this but before too. For a lot of people, I don't know how I sound. Yeah. I I need to hear. Mm-hmm. I think I could live without my sight before I could live without hearing. Yeah. Great and way of thinking I about it. It's coming so to, quick. I like music. I like talking, obviously. I, I need to hear. Yeah. If I didn't see things, okay, well, I've seen enough. I know what <laughs> colors look like. I know it. So I think, but also like sight. I like to look cool. I like to dress cool. I like to appreciate sure. like the way people look and shit. So I but, think the sound is most important to me. Yeah. I guess touch not. Yeah. I'm fucking bored Towards anymore. the bottom of the list. Although I do like to play guitar, so I don't fucking know. Yeah. God damn it. I've, dude, I've met people that also lost, you know, their like taste before or something or their smell. And like, yeah, that that totally like, oh, now I really miss it. Or yeah. damn, I, I forgot how, like how much I really enjoyed it. And it moves up their list. Those two are definitely towards the back for me, but I'm not a cook. Like what my taste, 
like honestly everything is just good i'm not that dude that's like yo that's the best burger in town i'm like all these burgers are all good you know like i don't yeah, I get you. like no texture or like i i get like spices or anything like that i can't tell you what no yeah the more and more i cook the more i can start get developing a palate yeah for all that exactly but i'm also like i'll eat water burger five times a week if i could so yeah. i don't give a fuck sometimes too mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, I don't know. And even with like smell, like I've met people who will put, who'll put smell higher up on that list. And it's like, what's the first thing you notice when you walk into a room? Like when I walk into a room, one of the first things I, I'm doing is like hearing. Like I'm the I'm usually the first person in a group that's like, yo, do you hear that? You know, whereas I've met somebody where like the first person, they're the first person to be like, yo, do you smell that? You know? And do you, do you, how, do you wear, um, let me just say this. I do not wear deodorant. And there are days where I can smell how bad I, I fucking stink. I wear deodorant. But I don't sure. give a fuck. <laughs> uh, That's not my question. Do you, do, you, do, you, do you care about like like cologne, shit like that? Honestly, it's been kind of calling to me a little bit. I met some dudes that had some solid cologne Sometimes on. It's, and I was like, it. wow, that's, I don't, wouldn't mind smelling like that. You, do you, you don't wear that uh, Rihanna smell anymore, do you? Rihanna. Was it Rihanna? Who was it? You know what I'm talking about? Your one perfume that you liked a lot. Alien, I haven't worn it. I really like that smell. Is it from? Oh, I'll wear it again. Is it from Rihanna? <laughs> it just it reminds <laughs> me it's of Jen. It's not Rihanna. He, no. he was Who planning was it? that. Yeah. It's uh, Mugler. That's what I said. Yeah, but, I'm pretty sure you said that too. But honestly. I like. Uh, I just like that. But I don't wear deodorant, and I think it's. Well, maybe if you you know if you want to, but natural mm -hmm. musk. That's how we've been for a hundred thousand years. Yeah. And now we're gonna put, you know, aluminum on our near lymph nodes and kill ourselves. Okay, well, you just go non aluminum and you're paying some extra. But do you even? Buttons. But does that mask the smell? That's what I've heard. No, no. I know, <laughs> and I also think it's a spectrum on how bad you could smell, like oh, with your own like oh. body odor. You know what I mean? And so there's some that are just like unbearable. Maybe I'm hard on myself. But like that's where I feel like I go. So mm -mm. gotta get the owner. It's happening. But the cologne, you don't really mm -mm. care for it. No, nah, but I'm down to find one. Like if one really calls to me and I'm in that situation, like I don't feel like I'm gonna go get one for sure. But I don't know if I find myself in some situation and I really enjoy the smell, I might be down. I might be down. Usually, occasionally, I'm sure it would last me forever. Mm -mm. Yeah, uh, Jen got me some like room spray, and it smells really. I like the smell of that. It's a good smell. Room, some room spray. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Nice. Because oh, your room be stinky. Or <laughs> because, of, <laughs> because of that little fucker right there. Yeah. He stinks Aww. bad. Just, just guy. He has a he has a must that little guy thing. room. Don't you generalize us? <laughs> <laughs> don't you do it. I don't wear a deodorant. I've so seen that's some. Enough. You should know. I've, seen, <laughs> I've seen some nasty girl rooms before. Although, although, <laughs> oh, sure. tell me what you think about this before we get on there. I don't like when people. I say people. Yeah, I know. Wear their outside from. clothes onto my fucking bed. I do. Even me, like this, I will not wear on my bed. I will change into something nice. else before I sit in my bed. I. That's a sacred I'm space. Just like, it it irks me, man. It really does. So you for sure don't eat on your bed. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> his reaction. No, 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 no. I don't, yeah, I, I kind of hate that shit. Too. I don't do anything but sleep on my bed. No. I don't know why anybody eats on their bed. Yeah, maybe if it's your only thing in your room and you have to spend it in your room, I could kind of understand it. But God, it just makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, I don't do. I have a little table though, so it's all right. I can sit right there and yeah, head hunched over. Even when I'm fucked up, drunk, I don't eat on my bed. Yeah, you know, like mm -mm. you've trained yourself. So on. do you? Do you ever think of like when you lay on your bed? Is it, is it a sacred spot? Like you're out, you're outside clothes. Do you say that? Like no outside clothes on my bed. Cause yeah. there's a group of us out there that exists apparently on Twitter. You don't wear your outside clothes on your bed, man. I'm glad you found your group. Yeah, I did. Cause <laughs> I relate to that 110%. Like no, no, no. Do you no. use a washcloth? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I do. Sorry. Is that I what the too. pores use according to hey, Tom Segura? Hey, I don't care. If I'm making a million dollars, I'm still work doing a washcloth. <laughs> Gets in the <laughs> in the cheeks pretty good, but yep. for a loofah. Did y'all think of y'all senses? Um, I would I would say sight. 
I number do, one. I do love watching movies. So even if I can't hear, I guess subtitles. But on top of that, sound, I guess, would be number two. Because mm-hmm. I do love music. I do love, I don't know, you know, just sound in general. Uh, I love, um, you know, because I grew up with classic cars. So I love the sound of fast engines, too. What about the smell of the exhaust, yeah, man, that's that destroying too. the ozone layer? He still got three more, bro. He hasn't put smell up yet. Um, oh, no. I would say touch for sure. Number three. Yeah. Touch them yeah. ladies, huh? Yeah. Well. Hey, be clean. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, behave. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> behave. Um, I'm trying to think. What other senses are there? What was that? Taste. Uh, you have taste and. And smell. And smell. You I would like say that. taste then smell. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but I have lost my s- smell. So if I do, maybe yeah. I'll appreciate it it's more. It's psychologically fucking. It fucks you in the head. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. I don't think even with that experience would I put it above sound or or sight. No. I'm cool with it. I, maybe I'm speaking earlier. You have good hearing? It fluctuates. <laughs> I think I have decent hearing. I think I have pretty good hearing. Yeah. Do you wear a lot of headphones every day? Yeah, I definitely wear headphones. Destroy the hearing. Pretty yeah, good. Yeah, I do. I keep it at these, a decent like volume. These are the ones in your ear. Like in my ear. In your- oh, do y'all remember the... Old school iPod. The best. Those were Airbus. the best. God. Oh, man. They used to blast. I think they got sued for that shit or something because they yeah, had to change it. It blasts too hard. I think that's why our generation's hearing is kind of fucked up because we would just, you know, you would turn it up with the circle and Dude, go all the way up. <laughs> I know, man. Clubs be loud and concerts and stuff. I think maybe we're doing a lot more of that, too. You know, I feel like concerts aren't as loud as what they used to be. I hope yeah. not. Yeah, because... But still, I think if you're the sounds up, probably if, got better. Like the, the if equipment? you're up close, though, dude, like people be next to those speakers and like want to be yeah. next to those speakers. You know, I see some like when we go to concerts, people with earplugs. Yeah. At first, I'm like, you pussy, and then after dude. the show, when the show's over, I'm like, fuck, I get it. I yeah. fucking get it. My ears are ringing. I'm down to buy some. I'm trying to invest in some of those, like, because I think that will go good in the long run. Oh yeah, it's the one thing like you can correct your eyes, man. They have a. You, I mean, you can wear a hearing aid, I guess, but. You really can't correct your hearing. Once it's gone, it's gone. Being deaf would be hard. Though that, like, I've seen someone who ended up knowing, like, sign language when someone came up who was deaf. And I was like, man, that'd be so cool to do for somebody. So that kind of, like, I hope to work on that someday. Give it to me. The rattlesnake. Nice. (laughs) Perfect. What's your friend's name? Nina? Nina. We had her on here. She's deaf. It was cool. She uh, yeah. she was talking to us about that. Stuff. She that's cool. She was born with uh, I believe it was an ear infection, and it just got. Um, she mostly hears out of one, but the other one completely. But she she had an impl- she got an implant very young, hmm. but that doesn't mean she hears clear. It's like a certain frequency where. It's I don't know if it's something that mimics the sound. Hmm. So I don't I can't I don't know if what she's hearing like she hears my actual voice. It's just a certain pitch that she hears. Wow, we need it. That's so trippy. Oh, well, you you weren't here for that one, were you? Were yeah, you? yeah, she was here. Uh, that was already a while ago. That was yeah. That was uh, when I was still off like on Saturday. Two or three years. Ago. Yeah. We're, we're already about to know each other for three years. Don't make me say bad words on this podcast. Why? I'm just saying it's almost been three years. When's the anniversary? May. <laughs> yeah, he that's, would know this. That's when I moved back from from Dallas. That's that's why I remember. May seventh. That's seven fifty two p.m. It was probably <laughs> around that time. Probably. It was after first Friday. I, mean, I remember the day. Friday, I just yeah. don't remember what day it was. I want to. I mean, it was first Friday, so it was first week of 2021. Are you making moves on my man, Rod? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <You're mean. laughs> Shit. He, was, he was mine first. I'm just gonna... Jen, what would your how would you rank yours? Um, I think sound is most important to me only because I genuinely do I love music as well as like, you know, film, but that's sight. But like even things like podcasting or like audiobooks, even like film, like I can paint a picture in my head pretty clearly. And so if I were to like lose my hearing or be without, you know, like sound or hearing or something like that, like it, 
That would probably be devastating. Yeah. And then I think second would be taste. Nice. Only because things that make me happy are like food. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like I genuinely like I I see food as like yes, like sustenance, but it's also like it's art, man. I love it. You know what I mean? Mm. Like I connected with Roy when we first like got together because I would I we, I would tell him like food's sexy sometimes. Like I don't know how to explain it, but it's just like for sure. Just you know, splurging on food or getting that dessert or being gluttonous. You know what I mean? Or eating like hot Cheetos. Yeah, you know, like I, I'm a hot Cheeto girl. I'm a hot Cheeto girl, but I also like fucking love other things. What's that other shit you like? Those frozen nerds or whatever the fuck. Whatever. I like air fried or air frozen, yeah, whatever, was... air dried. Um, but yeah, you know, like I just I love just relishing in that. You know, like yeah. living deliciously, truly. You know what I mean through like food. Yeah, and I, I could hear why it taste is number two. Yeah, you know I what could, I mean. I could hear it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, for sure, taste and then touch would be third. Mm-hmm. I um, I feel like I am very much like a. I'm a doer mm. and I do a hair. So I'm very mm. much like, like I can create shapes with my hands and just the slightest, yeah. the way my wrist can go or the way my fingers will like smudge a color. Like that's how I make my bread and butter. But it's also like how I can express myself or kind of show like something that I've perfected. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So touch is important to me and also just being a doer like i didn't explain it like i i like to exercise i like to lift weights i like to be very active so i'm guessing smell is for is next yes because it's presentation like it's like roy said you know like with like my perfume it's like Mm. it's almost like this like air of like this is how you will approach me. You know what I mean? And yeah. I, I feel like smell can do that. For sure. You know what I mean? It's like the way you carry yourself. It's almost like once the outfit's together, the hair's done, the fucking smells are on, the music has been playing. Yeah, you know yeah. what I you, mean? You're smoking the weed, smell? you're drinking the drinks. Who? Izzy. He does. He smells he, he, so good. You know his smell when you... when you. No, oh, that's Izzy. Yeah. No. Rockstar, baby. Shout out to him. Nice. Huh. Yeah. I think Smooth. he's. I think he's a Santal boy. It's whatever it is. It's, it's what? very distinguishable. Centaur. What's that? I think that's what it is. The, the green bottle? Oh, I don't know. But you know him. when like, it's if a you unisex met him smell. and you kept like hanging out with your mouth, yeah, that's... But that's another that's one. Like, that's his it's like you'll know when Izzy's around because you will smell him just that he's been around. You know what I mean? And it's not... Fuck, I'm going to put smell at number one. I don't nice. Know. I just feel like... And they could change too. Like Let scent is so expressive and it, and it can be so sexy, but it can also just... It's almost like... It's an approach. It's all, it's almost sure. like making your presence known. I like it. It's almost like being an animal. Smelling them Roy Even farts. like hair products, <laughs> like sight. like layering it and all that. It's good. You know what? I put smell at number one because he's right. My farts have a distinct smell. <laughs> like my dogs, each of them smell differently. I mm, like to smell you them. You could do that. That little fucker, his breath smells like fucking complete ass. <laughs> but nice. I like like gin smell. My mom has a distinct smell. Izzy does. Interesting. Different people have like, I, I like the smell. I know the smell of beer. You know what I mean? what, Tequila, what, like you can, I can smell it. What did that take the place of? What was your number one? I think it was sound. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. smell number one. Nice. I'm telling you, that's what the cooks do. And usually, what I found with people is that smell and taste are no more than just one one removed from each other, if, <laughs> if not next to each other. And they already have quite the relationship, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, that's why I had to guess. So last one is size. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm good for now. Okay. I mean, Thank obviously, you. like I would hate to lose my eyesight, for but sure. I feel like I. It's like I said, like. Sounds like you have a greater appreciation for like. Yeah, like I used form. to be like a reader. Like I, mm. I was into Harry Potter like right before the first mm. Harry Potter film came out. Like so, I was like a Harry Potter reader like, right before it came out. So it's like, I had painted this picture in my head. So to see it on film. Like I used to like doing that, like mm-hmm. as a kid, like in elementary, like reading books that were fil- adapted into like film or whatever. So it's like I would and I would read it before watching the movie. So it's like I used to like comparing the picture I painted in my head and like it would be like what I saw in the movie or maybe like what I had in my head was a little bit more vid- vivid and I liked it better, you know, with like my mental descriptions. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just like I can paint a picture really well in my head. 
Yeah, yeah. What y'all did so quickly that I really enjoyed was that y'all were so quick to explain each one. Not everyone explains right off the bat. And sometimes I have to be like, dad, just don't give me this list. Like I got, <laughs> I, I got to hear the reasons like, why. why. Yeah, I got to hear why. We've Wait. done, you know, 200 plus episodes on this. Yeah. You get good at explaining shit. That's, that's how he's got to do it, man. Yeah. Because I mean, that would have been boring if you didn't, if you just gave me the list. <laughs> how, like, so how uh, would you, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How would you lose your, would you just have to like lose your limbs to lose your touch? No. Nah. Well, I mean, I think you'd or still you burn, burn your, you can burn your. Yeah, but it's not just at like your fingertips, like, you know. Like your skin? Everything, yeah. I right. mean, yeah. there's that what certain hey, disease on, where you... sex is pretty nice. Well, there's that certain <laughs> disease where you feel like numbness. Behave. <laughs> there's like... That, I've had four beers in my bed. There's like that certain disease. I don't know what it's called, but you feel numbness and like tingling and you can't really feel. And then like, like a lot of diabetics have it. Oh, yeah. when you're like losing your... Mm-hmm. Yeah, he keeps eating leaves. <laughs> That's what he had on his mouth. This is why he gets sick. Yeah. Mm. Don't mess. <laughs> That's my boy. Shout out to him. Mine is touch number one. But I've I've always felt like I was just like really sensitive even to like temperature fluctuations. Like sometimes I like to think it's just because of how hairy I am. Like, oh, I could just feel the wind more easily. But um yeah, I don't know. Like touch has always been a sensitive one for me. So that's like and it's also like grounding like where I'm at. You know. Do you do that? Not all the time, no. Uh, and not like often, but I know that I just enjoy like the, the sensation of all these different, you know, um, so it's touch and then it's sound. Same thing for you guys, like, uh, music wise and stuff like that. But sometimes people put sound up there just because they prefer silence, which is also, you know, something, um, definitely something that I'm working on. I don't on. mean to be gay about it, but like when I'm silent, it's loud. Does that make sense? I can't like, be silent. Like, <coughs> the white it noise fucking sounds loud in, my in your head. mind. Oh, yeah. it's like you hear like a ringing or what? Have, no, have it was just overwhelming being silent. I cannot be silent. Yeah. Yeah. Have y'all ever heard of the quietest room on earth? You can't even be in there for that. Long. Um, yeah, apparently, yeah, it's like the most you can last is like five minutes. Interesting, because the white noise is just so. You can loud. hear like your blood flowing. Yeah, what a trip. <laughs> hmm. Where is it? Oh, uh, let's see. If I can spell quiet is. <laughs> Silence. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sound. I don't even know. Is it real? Because I've never heard about it. Yeah, it's this right here. I guess the way the the it, like the way these things are, it like cancels, slices through the sound, and like stops. I don't know. There's some weird science shit to it. <laughs> That's uh, true. Let's see. Minneapolis, that's Minnesota. America. Yeah, that's a trip. I don't know why I figured that would be like a Switzerland thing. That's what I was thinking too. I thought it would have been dark in there. Um, so you have touch. Oh yeah, and then it's sound, and then it's sight. Uh, I don't consider myself to like. I was never good at like I spy books, you know, or stuff like that. Like, where's Waldo? Like, where's Waldo? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, nice. But I, I I do feel like I'm an observant person, like from my surroundings, and then like when I'm engaging with people from like body language intake, like I, I'm I'm a, I'm observant, so I like I like sight. Um, and then the the two I would probably just put smell, just because of that association to like memory and stuff like that. And I I try to do that purposely. Like for a little bit, I was putting lavender in my beard in situations that I wanted to be more calm in, <laughs> hoping that I would associate lavender to calmness. Uh, and then I kind of ran out of lavender and I got lazy. But so, yeah, smell and then taste for what I told you all earlier, where like everything's all right. Everything's pretty good. Only thing I don't like is horseradish. Is it? I think. I think. I don't even know if I've had yeah. And I'm a condiment, like slut, but. I like you're, the, you're a what? Con, <laughs> I, I, like, I like to practice. <laughs> I didn't safe, get that, sorry. I, I'm a condiment slut. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah, I, I like to practice safe eating habits that's why i always use a condiment <laughs> i heard that on talking like ketchup and mustard and shit like that is yeah that's what, that's what a condiment is <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like what's a condiment <laughs> it's a just, con i just put it on it's just on mayo way. shut the fuck up yeah dude it's you like, all uh, you of like pickles a, i love pickles like, what is it called relish you like ranch hell yeah, oh i love ranch you like blue cheese 
certain blue cheeses. Really? I've had some there's that I, 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 I disliked. Did, I didn't know this. I don't know. Maybe people just do it better. I mean, every, there's like different tastes to ranch everywhere, you know? Mm -hmm. So mm, Wingstop Ranch. I've never had blue cheese. Neither have I. Mm -mm. I've, yeah. Sorry, Joey Diaz. <laughs> it's been a hit or miss for me on the on that. But for sure, horseradish is just too powerful of a taste for me. So that's the only thing you won't eat? Unless part? you could think of something. To I, me, I, it's the green stuff on sushi. What's the... Wasabi. 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 Oh, I just started getting into that. I'll eat oh. it, but it's like not good for... I don't like Dude, it. Dude, I'm like, oh, I could see why. There's like some pain enjoyment at a certain point. I'm like, wow, that was just a quick explosion. There's always that one piece of sushi at Market Street that has it. Yeah. And you get a little kick in it. Like you have to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you like, have to. Fuck, that shit's powerful. <laughs> I'm a bitch when it comes to spice, dude. Do you, remember, like do you remember the Jackass movie where he, he snorts, snorts it? Snorts. Yeah. Like, oh, God. He, now that I know how it tastes like more, that's wild. He went through and did his top five stunts like last month. And that was one of them. No way. He went and did like, it again. Uh, <laughs> Hell no. That's wild. Ooh. So do you just like break a piece of wasabi off and like put it on your sushi? I'm like currently in the process of trying to figure out how much is necessary to get the explosion that I want. I'm in the process of doing that. Even yeah, like do you just kind of like smear some on or yeah. do you like glob it on? Is like it how much the, you like? As of right now, I'm I'm getting like one chopstick into it and like I just don't even like the probably taste. like the explosion of taste or the explosion afterwards. <laughs> yeah, that, sushi that, that, makes shit like a motherfucker. <laughs> taste those for sushi sure. shits will fuck you up, man. I, man, is that I've never really is? had sushi before. Speaking of smell, I can tell when I've drink by the smell of my shits. Just throwing Damn. that out there. It smells number Fucking one for you, bro. Gross. We for sure know that now. <laughs> yeah, I can smell. The, especially when I drink liquor, I can smell the shit. Were Were you two surprised of each other's answers at all? That's sometimes a fun little way to go about I'm it. I honestly thought that you changed your. Well, I thought you were gonna say touch because you do hair. That's why I thought you'd be number one. Mm. That was my third. I thought yeah, it would be number third. one because of hair. You obviously really need. Yeah. I don't yeah. live it, to work. I work I, to live. Well, I mean, it's your, <laughs> but you're. I mean, you're passionate about it. That's why I figured. You know what's crazy? I watched a video yesterday. I've been watching a lot of NFL videos, just anything dealing with football. I I love watching. It was play um, the most unique players. Like there was players that like there was a kicker that didn't have a foot, um, football players that didn't have a leg. There was blind huh. football players, deaf football players. In the NFL? Um, no way. There's been a in college, oh, in college. Like there was a blind deep snapper for USC a few years ago. I remember that guy? Yeah. yeah. Wild. Um, but yeah, especially like playing a sport, you realize how much you need, like everything. Shout out to Jim Abbott. He's a pitcher for the Yankees. He only had one hand. Uh, mm. There was um, uh, you you mentioned Patrick Mahomes earlier. I played oh, basketball boy. with him a couple times, so I've like I've gotten to play basketball with like Jakeem Grant, uh, Mayfield, oh, uh, Damn. Pa Patrick Mahomes. Really? Yeah, because they they used to go to like now coaches try to like not let them play over at the rec, but they used to during the summer, uh, just because it was they were just like smaller groups running, and uh, so <laughs> we got this funny story because like. So Jakeem Grant was like how many years ago, right? So, like, I mean, he played for a while. It was like 10 years ago already. He played until a long like time ago. A couple yeah, years ago. It was at least six to eight years ago. Yeah. Yeah, he I played so long, he was Jakeem Grant Sr. There, there was a... Uh, so, I mean, I'm still pretty fast. I don't want to like... Oh, dude, he's like one of the fastest in the world. But, so I had to DM up, right? <laughs> and like... There was this one time he got so mad at me, dude, because he was just like, bro, you're fouling. And I'm like, dude, you're so fast <laughs> and you're so strong. Like, I got to put a hand on you just to put in, just to like lightly be in front of you. You know what I mean? His explosion was wild. But what one of the cool parts about still being able to like ball generally competitively that I've got, like, I know what it looks like to be athletic exploded or like athletic speed, you know, like his his lateral movement, his like his first step wild i think for reference like there is controversy that he had the fastest 40 ever interesting ever like of any nfl player ever didn't he do the olympics yes this yeah. is how fast this man is and you played basketball Bro. yeah and then the other two guys for reference for people who aren't who don't know listening our NFL quarterback. Yeah. God damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> That's so cool. There's a, a there's another guy that I want to mention just because he's so worth mentioning. But um, four point ten. So there's contention behind this because that's one of the fastest ever. Mm -hmm. Dude, uh, 
so yeah like it was so funny because th there was one point where like <laughs> it's my it's my only excuse nowadays where i could get physical with somebody you know what i mean like I, back in the day when i was like a kid i did have like the little homies that i could wrestle with now but now it's like it's hard to do that as an adult but uh but i get to on the court you know just like be physical with people and uh <laughs> jakeem grant got like he got to a point and i don't back down even when i know i'll get my ass whooped i fucking know it like this dude punches me i'm definitely out you know Him? yeah maybe you, dude i don't know it, he um but he's a little dude isn't he he threatened to punch me yeah he was five eight i think yeah he was uh even though i'm shorter oh he got that bad though. <laughs> huh he got that bad for sure for sure and i think like everyone would have disowned me at tech because then he probably wouldn't yeah. have played and like it would have been my fault even if i was like defending myself you know um but yeah it didn't happen it was really funny uh but when i played patrick mahomes you could tell how like naturally athletic that man is like he didn't have to it, it looked so effortless for him to play a different sport he is a gift from god shit did y'all yeah. see this what about baker what about Baker, bitch ass? Him too, man. He, like, you could tell he was so athletic. Like, right off the bat, there was a smoothness to the movement. That of, one right there. Really, yeah. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> there. I mean, he's an NFL quarterback, uh, Baker, so, I mean, he has to be athletic. He was athletic for sure. I, and, I mean, I don't think, like, a pain man could pick up a basketball and, like, move the way this dude did. You know what I mean? But, like, it it, it was... The, the caption. <laughs> what does it say? Patrick Mahomes' father arrested for DWI before <laughs> yeah. Super Bowl. That was his, that was yeah. his third DWI, unfortunately. Oh, that is unfortunate. Big deal. That's a lot. Yeah, um, no, he's going to prison for sure. But oh, really? Is I mean, if you that, get three, you're, that, that's you're a lot. in Texas. What? I, don't, I mean, maybe not for so long. So is he still locked up? Maybe or? not for a long time, but I'm you're going to go to prison. Not that it's funny, but that's he's funny seeing him like in the so, fucking parking lot. So and his shit. second, his second one, he got charged with. He spent ninety days in jail. Oh shit! So in Texas they don't play. So the third one is like prison time. Damn. He might not spend all his time, but prison Damn. for his third one. Yeah, he's fucked. That's why, especially because your son is it. Like, Vince uh, Young better be careful. I like, think he's on too. Right dog, now. why are you driving, brother? <laughs> Truly, on, why are you driving? You shouldn't have been. We can say that for sure. I'm like, why are you driving? This week of all weeks, anyways. <sighs> There's a there's an older man that plays on the court over at rec, over at the rec and his name is Dave oh my god Weinberg I'm pretty sure I'm not I'm not messing that up but he's also a professor um, he teaches multiple math classes over at Tech this dude's above 60 65 wearing the goggles style you know what I mean oh so yeah what was his name Grant Horace Grant like oh I'm not sure you put that on an old man though and he looks classic you know what I'm saying and he's got like some some um like armbands and stuff like that but like, uh, yeah you like that yeah baby yeah <laughs> dave weinberg dude and so he and he like always plays a couple games at the rec you know and like and he when he falls he falls gracefully like when he falls you have gotta take a de deep breath he's over 60 you know what i mean and he's also a concert pianist i think that's a skill isn't that cool to, oh to fall, fall gracefully, gracefully like, oh well, for like, sure like those guys you play they probably know how to fall yeah that's I would think that that's so important to teach a kid early on, like to fall gracefully. That's huge. It's huge. I've had some bad falls before. <laughs> hey, let's talk about it. I mean, I gotta yep. pee. God, I gotta pee like more. Don't go down. So many people believed it. So you're uh, you officiate weddings. That's so cool. How'd you get involved in that? Let's talk about that. Yeah, my uh, so my buddy Peyton, uh him and his now wife Shay uh two really close friends of mine and we were all mutual friends with a guy of mine who was my um a, a friend of mine who was my best friend unfortunately he passed away uh several years ago but uh he was the one that kind of connected all of us and you know since then we uh whenever they decided to get married they thought of asking me to be the wedding officiant and so i actually my first gig was over in zion national park beautiful so beautiful uh where's that at over in utah oh nice oh it was gorgeous it was gorgeous i made a, a whole trip you know um wow. went to the grand Whoa. canyon i know went to the grand canyon um highly recommend the grand canyon yeah i'll probably go over there after vegas dude you gotta do where'd it. you stay at at some teepees uh, uh, through an Airbnb uh, with a guy named Richard, who I still follow on Instagram, or like we follow each other on Instagram. So if you guys are looking for teepees, 
I know where to get you out in the Grand Canyon. Yeah, it'll be it'll be April, so it'll be hot. Yeah, that's my a possibility. parents told me to stay in Flagstaff. Beautiful stars uh, in terms of like you know just being out there, you know, kind of away from light pollution. Uh, so yeah, so that was my first gig, and so I kind of just started throwing it out there that I'm down to like do that again because I enjoyed it and. Uh, I took a different approach to it. So like when I when I get hired for it, I go through like an interview process, not only with, um, you know, the bride and the groom, but I'll extend that to both parents. And so uh, like I'll, I'll come in with the, like, you know, there's a there's a possibility that I'm not going to get any information that I'll actually throw into a personal speech that I'll write based off of the information that I gathered from the people getting married. And then I'll write a personal blessing also inspired from that. Uh, sometimes, you know, when parents are involved, because I recently did a wedding where that wasn't the case, uh, they'll give a good little nugget or a quote that they really want me to like put in and that the couple are down for me to put in. Um, so I do it a little different. Uh, and then, so I put it out there and about six months later, uh, my buddy Kyle and his wife, Rachel, uh, they got married in Vegas, asked me to be their wedding officiant. So then I got two already down in like six months. Uh, threw that out there again. And now I've done six weddings in a little under three years. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, got a website and everything. So which you could follow on my Instagram. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I would love to average like so far I'm on two a year, which was my goal. It'd be dope to do three or four a year. Yeah. And then travel. Oh, that'd be so Let me dope. ask you this. What have you learned about just marriage in general? Talking to these people. Especially like the parents and stuff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, love too, actually. What have you learned about all that? <sighs> Side note, there's a part of me that's like, should I keep track where like 10 years pass by and I'm like, everyone that I've wedded are still <laughs> married, you know? So now I'm a good luck charm, <laughs> you know, maybe. Uh, but... Um, uh, what have I, it, it's all looks so different. Every one of them has such a personal story. You know, there, there was a, there was one that I went recently, you know, who got remarried, you know, and her, his wife passed away and, you know, he had this whole story about how like he never thought that he'd like, you know, find that love again. And then she comes along and she has like a bad past with, her boyfriends would have never like have always wanted to get married and they they found each other and then they got married and like even hearing that story I was like oh that's so cute like a second chance at love while the other like while the other person like you know views that as like the first person to like love her correctly yeah. you know and so and then with like the first couple that I wedded Pey Peyton and Shay like they had a rough point in their like dating time over around like a year year and a half and um, they went to Zion together and like they need, they wanted to get married there because that like, um, like lit the fire again. Uh, so I've, I've seen how it kind of comes and goes. And then like, I just wedded my, my first two strangers who kind of found me through a friend of a friend. Um, okay. And so it was really cool to get that one out of the way, but like, you know, understandably they're like, hey, we like, can we get a contract or something? Because like, we don't know you. And like before that, I never signed anything. You know, people just took my word that I was going to go do it because they're my homies, you know. Um, but I was like, okay, understandable. So went, went through that whole process. Uh, and, you know, they came to Lubbock with an intention to find the other. And a year and a half to two years into their marriage, and they're so sure about each other. Um, and they have a kid coming up. I'm actually going to drop off some diapers this weekend. So, and it, it's been cool to have those connections and stay close with all of them and even like the parents that I've gotten to meet where it's like I don't know what it what what you go through to get a wedding together but it seems like a really big process and uh for for them to know that one part is covered by someone that cares usually makes them that much more willing to pay me <laughs> you know and like because they're like oh man this guy really wants to come through you know uh so yeah, man, I do it differently and I know I'm dope, like for like, especially at weddings, you know, like I'll, I'll mingle, I'll make sure everyone dances at the right time, you know, like I'll put myself out there. I'm worth it. I'm worth it. What is the pro? Is it easy process to, do you have to get like a Oh, a every license? state, every state is different. Yeah, yeah. You had to do it for Nevada and Utah? Yeah. 
and here and they were easy assuming. all three of them were easy yeah so i actually have no experience yet with something that's going to give me a hard time i'm not gonna lie one of my young goals i have many is to be an officiate for a wedding i think it'd be fun as fuck yeah do you got a homie where you almost expect that they're gonna ask you no i don't know i just want to do it yeah yeah oh you'll get you one. know just randomly just say fuck it'd be cool it's fun man it's so fun i i really that it, it's really touched me and like just writing writing all those things down and like them liking it too Do you, you want to cry at any point of those <sighs> a couple times yeah yeah yeah, yeah. A couple, i cry at weddings a couple times i wanted to cry for sure because it's just so beautiful i'll never it's forget your moment. friends getting married oh see i'll never Denny. forget that one that was that was cool in the midst of all the pandemonium of pan of the pandemic and all that her friend got married it was really refreshing to go to Oh, that is so cool. like, yeah me too oh. actually talking about it but it was cool oh that's really cool shout out to them that energy is so fun man like you know i've had what i've had an experience where like uh the bride got you know kind of just overwhelmed with everything that was going on and she just kind of had to sit down during like the whole speech thing which was cool everyone worked everyone's there to make the bride as happy as possible that's another thing that, right? that's another thing that i found like there's no there's no way you mess up big enough for anybody to convert the energy from like just being so happy for y- for y'all. Oh yeah. There's like and it's so palpable, you know. Oh, it's so cool. It's so cool. Like, yeah, I, I've seen like a, a couple of like little mess ups here and there, but everyone's like the mic turns off, and now nobody can or like the they're not mic'd, and they're trying to give each other their vows, you know. And I am the only person that could hear them, you know. And I'm like, oh, what a special what a dope moment and i'm like what i'm trying to express to the crowd knowing that they can't hear it is like it's great <laughs> you, you know like they're saying so much love to each other right now <laughs> Where i'm like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but yeah you know, what i learned about love is that it just comes in everyone's story is so dope it's different huh? yeah it's just so cool um you know like i said i grew up catholic and all that but i'm not gonna lie a, a vegas wedding sounds kind of fire yeah, it'd be fun. I think it'd be kind of fun. Would you ever? I have, think it's supposed to be fun. Would you ever have a Vegas wedding and an Elvis impersonator <laughs> marries it? Yeah. I would. <laughs> it'd be funny. It'd you, be cool, <laughs> especially how you would dress too. Like yeah. you'd have the jewelry on, the all black. Like oh, I bet that would you look know? hilarious next to next to Elvis Presley. Super He's like, do you take this lady to be your wife? <laughs> <laughs> I need a Lemmy Kilmeister impersonator. No, that's what I need. Yeah, that's cool. what I need. A Lemmy. Vegas wedding sounds fucking fun. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we, somebody we, in a kiss costume. Because <laughs> we, 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 we were there last year. We drove by some of them getting married. They look cool. Oh, yeah. like did y'all go we down We literally the passed chapels? by a little chapel and yeah. a couple was walking out. And I was like, oh my God, they just got married. Like I just immediately was like, that's beautiful. You should just make it mandatory for everybody in attendance to be one of y'all's favorite rockers. So you can mm-hmm. have the kiss outfit and you can have like the, the Elvis. You can have I'd funny. be the Lemmy one. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how many people get married in Vegas daily. I don't know. Let's look that up. Well, yeah. I'm curious. What's your uh, stance on weddings and all that marriage? <sighs> Man, I mean, because there's obviously incentive. I've always wanted to talk about this. There's, there's always, there's incentive to get married, right? And like, what do you mean? Like, um, are there like financial gains? I don't have any in incentive to get married. But do you? But is there not like on tax, like on um, when you're like filling out taxes and stuff like I that? I don't want to look it? at it like that, so I guess not. But I, I, I consider that to be an incentive, and I don't know. I think generally, and then how difficult it is to get divorced and that experience and, and i don't know it feels forced see this is the point i was trying to like to me like this is one marriage in my life that's it mm-hmm. i don't ever want to be divorced in my whole entire life yeah so in las vegas till there, death do us part man in las vegas there is a there's an average of 315 weddings a, a day, day? yeah motherfucker there's that many chapels? Jeez. Oh, there's like a street. Wait, you, we we like, drove down the street. They're doing them like on time slots. A day? Yeah, That's so you like so reserve many. a time. And you're in and out. Bro, even if you're unhappy, like you, you wouldn't let yourself get out of the wedding or get out of being married. That's why I there's I like take a that str- seriously. There's like a street of them. Yeah. No, we yeah. went down the street. We saw that one exactly. 
I'm trying to remember which yeah, one. Yeah, we saw that one exactly. It was not the one that was not the one that I went that I did it. It was not, it was on the roof of. Uh, did you guys party afterwards? Dude, it was so fun. Like they they had hired. Do you happen to know like what's Elvis <laughs> bridal on What's what's the name of like a wine connoisseur specifically? Do y'all know what I'm talking about? There's a there's a word for it. Um, a wino? I don't. Know. No no no, no. There's a whole. Let's see how he spells connoisseur. it. Let's see how he spells it. Yeah, just say expert. <laughs> I think it's C O N N. That's console. <laughs> It's like a French word, man. What? Oh, oh wait, Samo. Con. Sa- uh, Sam- okay, how do you spell it? It's right there. It's right there. C O N N O I S S E U E U. Above it, the first, the first drop down. A Somalia? Uh, is that what it is? Somalia. Yeah, it's right there to your yeah, right. Yeah, there you go. Person with profile. That's what I knew it. Somalia. Okay, okay, and then there's another one for like a like liquor expert maybe me uh <laughs> like from whiskey to like everything anyway so his homies all came in on a uh on a guy who was all of these ex like I this <laughs> I <can't remember. laughs> so That's just uh, imagine these five guys just being entertained hearing the knowledge that this dude had of like he took us through a whole journey of like what our favorite whiskeys would be and then like gave us a tasting on how to properly taste it to the point that like you're like dipping your tongue in such a way that you hold it at the bottom and you're trying to like it was a whole thing and he like and you could smell it afterwards like we were all like (laughs) smell just imagine a group of men so into you just be from your from the fact that you know everything about beer and liquor. <laughs> Do y'all ever watch um, Two Chains Most Expensive in Used the World? To. He did one where I guess they they deal with different kinds of marijuana. And it's like, man, there's people that treat like uh, weed like wine. When you're talking thousands <laughs> of dollars, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That trips me out so much. I that would be I bet you those people would put taste really high on their list. You know what I mean? Yeah. They they got to. They got to. It's fun to eat. It's fun when you to like you like you know you're saying like taste liquor like that. Yeah. It's fun to do those sort of things like I guess it would be fun to like you guys smoke weed. Well, some people at this table smoke weed. It would be fun to like and, and even like food, it'd be fun to like take that extra step in food. We did that once at a, uh, what was it called? The restaurant here? Um, Claire Boya. Uh, like I they, like they elevate food to another level. It's fucking fun to like experience food like that. For sure. Or anything like that to another level, I think anyways. Yeah, that's a, that's a trip. The, uh, oh, what brought us into food? What didn't bring us to food? <laughs> Where are we at in this we, conversation? We were, we were almost we're at one. No, no, I say where are we at in this conversation? What are we oh. talking about? Uh, right before. Because you that. were saying, well, you were saying you were in. Oh, Somalia. We were talking yeah. about, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think I was, I was just talking more about all the different, like, wedding experiences I've had just with six already. So hopefully I get more of those. Yeah, let me go. I'll, 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 I'll get it. There might be some blue moon in there. Blue moon. You saw me stand. Would y'all ever karaoke? That's one of my things. That's like one of my thing things. I've never karaoke, but I like to watch it. Yeah. Eh, if it's there. Dude, I love karaoke. I call myself the karaoke Where king, do you go? dude. Uh, sometimes it depends on what I want to perform. So, like, <laughs> so, right. so, um, Schooners started doing uh, karaoke Thursday through Saturday by this um, this girl who's young sta- crybaby. Yeah, shout out Aaliyah. So down. you know what's really cool is that like she's brought together such an eclectic group of people. You'd be surprised like where um, yeah. in this fridge. <laughs> <laughs> Where, look, see what's in there. You know, like traditional spots like Adolf's, like you, you could love Adolf's, you know, it's an older crowd. You could bring some older music into it. People enjoy country. Um, people still enjoy country over at Schooners, but like you'll get the whole array of like, and you'll you'll find people that don't look as if they know all the songs that they know, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I have a whole playlist on Spotify of the songs that I do that are over 140 songs. I have yet. Okay, I've repeated a song twice oh. in, in the in the nine months that I've been going to Schooners. 
anyway, I think karaoke is an art, and I like let the soul sing, baby. Let the soul. What day do you go? I go on Fridays usually. Oh, yeah. yeah, like like this Friday. Hold on, give me a second. Third. Once I start, no, I did. Look at yeah, the whole six pack. <laughs> I I had only three. <laughs> I I can't stop once I start. Yeah, dude, that was a quick pace. Um, that was a quick pace. I wanted to talk to you because you commented on something I posted about free will. Mm. Have you thought about that? What's, what's your thought about it? Okay, so this is. Um, this might not be the most satisfactory answer, but I've definitely, you know, part of me wants to say, you know, free will has to exist for my own sanity. Uh, that's just kind of how I view it where I'm like, man, I need to think that I have free will just to like, um, but I've met other people that feel as if, uh, they need determinism to help them understand like, oh, like that was outside of your control, you know, like that was all predetermined, so I can't really get mad at you. And it, it just helps them try to view being human in a positive light. For me, I definitely, I see, I think sometimes we can block ourselves from thinking like, oh, you have to go one way or you have to go the other, or why, or is there a way that both of them could be true at once? And so I, I would say there's a way of living life that looks very deterministic, like much like a plant like if you put, if, if it's got sunlight on one side, it's gonna start moving in that direction, not necessarily because it chooses to do so, but simply for the fact that it's just being and being a plant. I think there's some ways of living in life that can look deterministic, let's say um, an alcoholic or a drug addict. So it's pretty easy to see like where that goes. And I like to think that the exercise of choice to get you out of a way that looks pretty, pretty deterministic puts you into a more free will space. So I think there's ways of living life that have that happen to have both of them. That's how I feel about it. I know that some people are pretty, uh, I guess, strict with, with you're either this or that. Mm, I think both are true to some degree. What do y'all think? Fuck, I don't know, man. It's very, I don't know. It's, it's even I don't know because that guy explained it pretty weird to me and maybe we're just confined to these these sort of rules yeah only and that means maybe it is all predeterministic. But do yeah. we need you know? guidance though? Like, do we need it? I don't know. Guidance in what way? Well, it's just you hear about certain people have this belief like we should, you know, we don't need to work seven days a week you know, nine to five, that kind of thing. But at the same time, you, we need that to survive, you yeah. know, not everything. Like if, if we lived in the world where yes, like, yes, it would be nice if we all were just out here, just chilling, everything was free, but us human beings get lazy after a while. I don't know. I feel like we need something to push us, to motivate us, to, I don't know. What, it's, it's, the, the what, person. what was that the argument for in terms of like free will or determinism? What was someone speaking of when they talked about that specifically? What like, was he like Chris what, was he was just saying like there's just like a set of rules and in those rules you can only do so much. Yeah. So and, it's like you can freely choose but only within those. Mm, oh, okay, you know I mean? okay, 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 okay. So maybe like, like even having to play within like laws of physics type of ordeal. Type shit, like, uh, okay, okay. And that, that was his view where it was kind of a little bit of both yeah, or something. I think it was a little bit of both. Yeah. He got to it a different way, but I'm there with him <laughs> in, just, in some little way. Just weird to think about like, do, am I supposed to do this? Mm -hmm. Or did I choose to do this? Yeah, you and, know that there was, and that there was no way that you would have chose otherwise whenever you have made the choice. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, oh, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. What is your idea of of, a, of like a like a, a deity? Uh, okay, so I I am definitely monotheistic. So I do believe there is one God. Um, I I am like playing with some more pantheistic ideas of like uh, the universe itself is God. That's what I'm, I'm starting to believe. I'm not. I'm not necessarily there. Uh, 
as I've delved a little bit more into reincarnation, as I've gotten older, some of that jives with me a little bit. Um, but I know that sometimes puts itself, I mean, doesn't necessarily uh, concern itself with God. It concerns itself more so with like living life um, and wherever you may land through like maybe karma or something like that. Um, some people would say that that does sometimes lead to a more polytheistic way of thinking, um, like a multiple gods type of thing. I think sometimes when people have certain certain psychedelic experiences and they see that they're like they were they are they would be willing to call it multiple deities or multiple gods, that that opens themselves to a more polytheistic way of thinking. But uh, I'm pretty convinced with like there's certain arguments let's say put forth by like um, by Aquinas and he he put he put forth five and I, I think of it in a whole different kind of way. I, like I try to meld all these ideas together, but one of them. Uh, uh, it's just kind of like where you can, something doesn't come out of nothing. So what's the ultimate something or like the Aristotle, like the, uh, the unmovable mover type of thing. Uh, uh, so I do think that you, you either infinitely regress or something created it. And even then you can still have the perspective that there's multiple of those some things that have the power that, that can create something, but then what created those things? So I am a, I do think there's one God in the way that I'm thinking of it. Uh, what I think about consciousness or like... It's fun to think about. Or, or whatever it is that animates us, I do consider that to be uh, divine in some type of way. Uh, and so I do think that there is some piece of that that is some extension or some part of God. If you're the, like, if you're the pantheist, then you would think that that is... Uh, like a portion of it, almost like the universe is some uh, like giant body of water. And, you know, once your soul comes back to that giant lake, you can't decipher that that was ever a drop of anything. So you're just a part of the everything again. Well, it's part of the soup, huh? Part of the soup, baby. <laughs> um, I like that image. Not there yet. Let, uh, okay, so let me, let me ask you this. So for you, when you're doing these weddings, for, so for me, whenever I was at the wedding, I mentioned the energy and the feeling. I was like, "That's love," mm -hmm. that, and to me, like, that's God. Yeah, yeah. What is that? How do you? What would you say that feeling you get when you're marrying these two people? This this union of love and this energy you feel at a wedding. What, what would you call it? Yeah, yeah. So definitely love, but equating that to like like that God is love. That's what I would say. Yeah, yeah. I, I, And I've heard a lot of like this, you know, way of thinking. I think there's a guy that I follow named Aubrey Marcus who very much would like, would say generally the same things. Uh, he does like. But I also think yeah. like, I also like, like God as the Holy Spirit or the force. Mm -hmm. It's just, is the universe. It, it's just this, it's in all of us. It's yeah. the very fabric of the universe. That's how yeah. I see it too. No, I, like I think. It. Yeah, I don't know. I think heavily about it. Um, like I said, I do think there's something divine in all of us in terms of whatever animates us, and I do think that that itself connects to some god or the creator. Uh, I hmm. Has there have there been any other things like when I think of? It's, it's, okay, when you so think about your love for your dog. What so do you think about? So let's so let's say we go with like love, right? That God yeah. is love. Okay, so the the ultimate push to that, or like what leads people down, like a very classic issue philosophically, is like the problem of evil, where you start associating love to be like you know a truly um, uh, what what would the what would the word be like a you know I, I guess we'll just so get so like a a loving god you know what why why is it that people die with cancer or uh, why is it that there's famine in the universe that god created and usually whenever you come across the problem of evil that's like the first time that you maybe disassociate yourself to some religious belief or something like that um so it, it's a classic problem to come across and i find whenever you if you put yourself too much in a space in which you know god is love and you start having the expectation that god does good things uh then you then you can potentially gain like a negative pers perspective maybe towards spirituality more broadly when you feel as if 
like why should a god exist or that god isn't good you know uh but yeah so i i i haven't gotten there to that like god is love but i really enjoy the notion <laughs> so in your life when do you experience something divine there's been like probably a few times uh within it's been a while since i really like there's like a oh i mean I, I what i've read in terms of what how it could be explained there is this like explosion of energy kind of in in like heart space and it's unexplained and i'm like wow this really moves me and or like why am i so emotional right now in this random moment that maybe isn't like the most beautiful but for some reason something's clicking uh i've had a few of those moments like yoga uh sometimes i'll touch it i'll touch yeah. that space sometimes and it's been a little bit because you know it's a practice for a reason and some people just access it so quickly you know but uh you know for me it it just it has to hit when it hits you know and I, I would love to be able to summon it which some people say they can do through you know different yogic practices uh so yeah i, fi I find that i find that interesting but you, you you gonna do yoga with me or what <laughs> oh we should do it i need to be more flexible man hold it at the cast bro i'll come i'll come out Oh, I thought you were saying, you, where, where do you do yoga at? I, um, so there's two spots here in town. Uh, it is tribute that I go to, um, that I teach at Mondays, 7.45 PM. Um, and both of them are hot yoga classes. So tributes on 34th street. And then it's like around 80 something, maybe like 90th street and Milwaukee, this place called Olive Grove Fitness. Um, but I've been teaching for f six years now, since 2018 uh where i started at the yoga stand and uh it didn't survive covid unfortunately so we should ask the cast if we could do it dude i would love it bro and i'm beginner friendly like i i care so much about that beginning experience like sometimes and there's nothing wrong with this but like sometimes people will approach yoga in such a way that's like oh let's push let's push you and show you how much your body can do and that you'll be surprised about but sometimes like it's really easy to get into your mind about some things where it's like, oh, if I can't do this pose the way like everyone else is expressing it, then this practice isn't for me. And so the goal is to make it accessible. The goal is to like show people that like movement is what's important. And like yoga is a good space towards that along with breathing, like learning how to breathe intentionally and being able to summon that fire, fire. But yeah, so yoga is another thing I do that I would love to share love to share how'd you get into that how'd you get into teaching that man i got so lucky there's been so many times in my life man where i've just been so blessed to like someone to gives me a chance you know what i mean and uh you know i got i got lucky enough to like i've always been pretty naturally flexible there was a friend of mine named colton who kind of introduced me to the practice and i was like you know what i've been meaning to do this i've been meaning to meditate for a bit but i was like let's start off with yoga and uh started doing it then i like i wanted to do it at home because i was so worried about like that classic experience of like oh it's another guy in the yoga room like he's only here for one reason type of shot uh so i wanted to get comfortable with the, all the poses before i would like go there and like look around and maybe make someone else uncomfortable anyway when i got all, like when i felt confident in that space i reached out to a lady who was just trying to find my home in a yoga space and her name was Haley bevers absolutely wonderful beautiful human and i mean i couldn't afford it at the time but she saw that i was like genuinely interested in it and so there was like a scholarship type of thing that she gave me so i was lucky enough like six months into my practice to already be taught uh, and get put into like a 200 hour training program uh so i was gifted it it was really cool it was really cool are you familiar with like flow state getting into the flow state uh, oh yeah and, and do you get into that when you're doing yoga I'm curious if like is there anything that you do that you that you get into that flow state like right now? Yeah, uh, yeah. In, in, into like doing a podcast. Yeah, oh, I love uh, that. Playing guitar. Yeah, uh, and landscaping because I've done it so long. Yeah, there's, there's these these moments where I'm like, oh shit. Yeah, it's so interesting how yeah. like different things can bring people into flow state. Like what do runners call it? Like the runner's high. The runner's high. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or like you know, weightlifters have their own version. Like sometimes, bro, I'll get it in basketball, and that feels so good, dude. And I, you know had my fair share of drugs in my past so like i know what it means to feel real 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 good <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh dude it's such a when i did yoga i felt like my body was resisting it i'm mm. not gonna lie 
It mean, takes a while, dude. It it's is. a whole different thing, dude. Yeah. yeah, moving your body differently. Like I mean, someone that's not knowledgeable of yoga, you go into a yoga room. That shit looks weird. You know, you it know, is intimidating. Do you know Greg Foster? Yeah, yeah. Body. over at body. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, um, I'm about to get back into body. Yeah, I did it for like a year and a half. Good. And I kind of just stopped. Um, but yeah, I'm about to go back. Would you say that you saw any benefits from it over the year and a half? Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I'm not flexible, but I, I never let that. Because mm. a lot of people always say, well, I'm not flexible enough, but I, I've never let that. Yeah. I just, I mean, you're to yourself. No one, no one is stretching and looking at you and like, oh, I, I can't believe he can't do that. No yeah. one. You're, fo- you're really focused on to yourself anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I like the, I like, um, I like body a lot. <clears throat> Um, I like their studio because it's like yeah, that second it's story. Yeah. It's beautiful. And, and, and Greg is pretty cool too. Greg is so cool. Yeah, the yoga community is pretty tight knit. We all know each other in some way. We've all heard of each other yep. in some way. Uh, Body is another one of those spaces here in town. So cool. Uh, wish well, we had more options, but yeah, all good. Man, last summer their AC went out <laughs> and oof, it was hot yoga the whole time. Yeah, which I'm used to, but some people don't like sweating, man. Like really, really, oh, really sweating. sweating. So cool. Man, every time need I need to I need to get back in because uh on my watch, every time I do yoga, I end up losing like almost seven, like six to eight hundred calories yeah. on certain days. I love that it's getting like promoted. Like a lot of athletes are getting into it. Like it probably helps that like Joe Rogan talks positively about it too. Do but. you know Elise mm. Um uh Karina? no uh, sh- she's now teaching um she's now teaching at tech she does it that's uh cool. with the with the rugby players and the cheerleaders that's so cool yeah, yeah i would love to just get a, a gig <laughs> that that way through tech that'd be so dope i um so when i went to tech i minored in acting but there's a class you oh, have cool. to you're, there's a class you have to take called movement for the performer well there's two versions of that class there's one version where it's with the actors. It's very, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's actors. So it's very like, you know, you just move with the moment kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then there's another one where it's dancers. Uh, and so I ended up <laughs> with the, the dancers. Nice. And so the one that taught it was the head coach of the Palm Squad. That was probably one of the hard, every time I would go in, that was probably one of the hardest workouts I had to do every day. Nice. And at the same time, uh, it was one of the hardest, um, you know, because it was almost like taking an A and P class because mm. you would have to learn all the bones. If you injured yourself, you had to diagnose yourself. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? Yep. Yoga, baby. We got me. Are you pretty in tune with your body? Yeah, I, was, you I would say so. Yeah. yeah I, I've, I definitely appreciate I've, I've appreciated getting more and more of that. As I've practiced more and more. Do you lift weights? Yeah, yeah. I try to get, man, I, it's been, I've been on a little bit of a break, but uh, I'm, I'm looking to get back. I, I, if I could have it my way, it'd be three strength training a week. I would go three yoga classes and maybe have the option for a fourth strength training and two cardio sessions a week. Uh, that's what, if I could have it my way. And uh, I've done it before, but yeah, I stay pretty active in that way. Like I said, dude, I gotta stay fast on basketball, bro. More and more people are calling me out on being older, dude. And I'm like, shut up, shut <laughs> up, dude. Oh, how, am I? Is that how I look like? I'm, I'm still faster than you, and you, you're just gonna call me out on my age. But oh, yeah, God. 32 is not bad. I'm in my prime. I just feel like the older I get, I feel like 30s are your prime, man. Dude, for sure. Especially if I'm like staying active still. Like the, I, I have experience with me. Like I'm still pretty quick. I. I I was lighter and I jumped a little bit higher, like at 27. Like I peaked like 27, 28, but all good. <laughs> Do you feel like the older you get, though, this, was, this is how I'm feeling. You had to warm up more. Oh, for is sure, dude. Means? For sure. That's how I'm starting to feel like. I just got to warm up more. Once I warm up, I'm good. How, long, how much do you spend warming up? Because, man, I'll put like 10 minutes into it. That's about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah about yeah. 10 minutes. Jiu-jitsu. When I do jiu-jitsu. Nice. They have us warm about 10 minutes. That's all I need. Dude, that's so cool that you yeah. do jujitsu, dude. I'm I, I would love to do some training in that like a martial arts soon. 
I'm a little worried about getting injured because I don't have health insurance. So like, <laughs> so I really can't. Like, if I'm gonna get hurt and I get screwed, it's gonna be playing basketball for sure. Did you, did you, will, you will more. I think you would get hurt more in basketball than you would jujitsu. Honestly, Dude, you, they don't crank on next type of stuff. Like, I mean, when you're working out, like, because now I'm up in this more advanced people. Like, yeah. I'm at the low low end of it for it, but they know what they're doing. Yeah, so yeah, they're not gonna hurt you. Yeah. They're not like. When you're a beginner, you might do something crazy and hurt somebody, but these guys know what they're doing. Yeah. Oh, that's why I, when I was going to tech, uh, I was on the rugby team for a little bit, but I quit because I was like, man, it's really not worth getting hurt because mm-hmm. you're not. They, they have a program where they'll cover the first <laughs> like five thousand dollars. But if you break your leg and you have to do surgery, that's it's probably gonna cost a little more than that. For sure, dude. I'm so scared that I've never broken a le- I've never broken anything. Me either. Never broken anything. Too. Dude, if I did, I imagine I would act like a little bitch so hard, <laughs> dude. I imagine I'd be like, ah, ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. No way. But I, I couldn't. I can't recommend enough for people listening to do something hard. Oh, for sure. Like, yoga's hard. Like MMA, something. Do something. Or something that scares you to go do it because it's kind of intimidating to go do yoga. For sure, for sure. I can't stress that enough to people listening. Like, just go do it. Dude, movement, man. You have to. Movement works too, bare bare minimum. But yeah, all of it can be hard. I would love to go to like a dance class. That'd be so cool. Uh, I would love to roller skate. Like, dude, I I don't. I would love to roller skating. I'd love to roller skate. Not that that's a workout or anything like that, but like I'm sure it can be with the legs, like depending on how long you ride. It's movement, but, man. But uh, I want to rent out a skating rink and have a DJ and just dude, have fun. that'd like, be so bros, cool. Like dude. just some beer and some DJ music, dude. That's also why I want to do it now because I could fall and still be okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, I'm still young enough to take a fall, so yeah. I, you know, I I can't be risking falls at like plus forty. You know, like <laughs> I can't just be doing that. Um, but, but yeah, do some do something hard for sure. Uh, I need to get back into working out. I'm gonna make this my my sign that I'm I'm getting back on that workout regimen for sure. Is it? I'm sorry. I'm gonna go pee. So beers, man. The beers. I know. I'm surprised you only needed to do it once. But what Rogan uh, said, you can't talk when you have He said that today with Aaron Rodgers. You're a fan of him? You Who? listen to Rogan? Oh, yeah, dude. I think he's so cool. I think he's so cool. What do you think? <laughs> I, I'm surprised he's controversial, Rogan's. dude. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, how is this man controversial? When people say that, I just like, you don't listen to him. Dude, and it's like you have so many options on different conversations to listen to, like, I don't know how. What's, what sort of media do you intake other than Rogan? Yeah. Um, dude, I've been so into fighting lately, like MMA. Like I'm trying to, I'm trying to expand outside of the UFC right now and look at different organizations. Like one, um, or was it? There was like a, there was a merger between like Bellator and the PFL or something like that. And um, but right now I'm like confident in my UFC knowledge. At least like I could, I could kind of name off a good top eight top oh, yeah. 10 of like each weight class but i think the fighting mentality is so crazy bro like people fighting now like this nobody nobody's fought like this you yeah, know it's like peak athleticism right now dude and like and like the gaining of knowledge from different parts of the world to like show your own martial art and like how it's expressed through one individual dude and in front of tens of thousands of people, seeing people in their most vulnerable state, the most primal thing you can engage in, like hand-to-hand combat. Can you imagine getting knocked out in front of tens of thousands of people and then waking up to the lights being around you and everyone being like, ah. No, no. Dude, I'll tell you what. So I, I'm, I'm doing jujitsu at Pittman Academy. And on Monday, awesome. on Monday, I was the only one that showed up for the 630 class, so they merged us. So it's all black belts <gasps> and fucking guys in that area and me. And this motherfucker, had, he was teaching me techniques, the, the instructor, and he was just showing me a, a choke you can do with grabbing somebody's gi. Mm-hmm. And the he wasn't even, he fucking 1%, he choked me. I'm like, motherfucker, That's motherfucker. So These yeah. guys... Are, and then you add punching. You add punching to that. I'm like, oh, how are these? This is a different breed of human beings, man. Dude. These guys are like, 
warriors for it, real. true warriors <laughs> yeah bro. Like, oh my god i'm not in that class of people man it blows my mind like how someone just doesn't appreciate fighting like i've heard like the arguments of like how barbaric it is but like dude people have been fighting forever but like there's a style to it like there is an art to what these guys are doing yeah it is an art man and like being in a flight or fight mode like all of us wouldn't be able to think about what's the next like move that i want to do next while i'm in front of somebody who's really trying to knock me out yeah. and hurt me you know do you have any favorite fighters in the ufc by chance but strickland ah, that's my boy so fun. my boy sean strickland baby that's so fun i like him he beat my boy dude izzy was my number one Izzy's dude. cool man i like izzy. i love izzy i, I love izzy i love court like i love Corey sanhagen he's so cool um Sugar Sean O'Malley is so it's Sean so O'Malley is cool, man. Dude, it's so awesome. Just speaking of like those like Champions. different regions and shit, I like those Dagestanian guys. Dude. God, they're cool. They're like in the village having to go up through mountains. I, and, like, I respect your, like, I, I almost like, I don't know how to say this, like, I almost like your, your belief in it doesn't matter to me that like, your commitment to is uh, you know like the islamic faith your commitment to the catholic faith whatever it is like your commitment to a faith is i like it yeah. it's interesting to me like these guys are committed yeah dude it's you know what i mean so i like, think I like it's so that. cool i do too i'm like i, I respect the shit out of these guys dude for sure how do you not that anybody that enters that cage but much less anybody that becomes a champion you know like the champion stories are crazy the champion stories are crazy. Uh, but yeah, so I didn't take a lot of MMA. Uh, have you been punched in the face? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And I've I done don't feel like a lot of people have. <laughs> and they need to be. Get punched, or get you. choked out. I'm with you. I'm with you know what you. I mean? Like, I've lost a couple of fights. Uh, and, I've been, and I've been jumped. And I've, put, I've been put at gunpoint to, uh, th right. three well, times. Well, already? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wild. But... Uh, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> On uh, which ones? The fight, the jumping, the gunpoint. Gun oh, dude. Okay. Uh, so, back in the day, I shouldn't. Is this when you live in your border town over yeah, there? Yeah, Del Rio, oh, Texas. Man. Yeah, dude. Life's different in the border town. <laughs> I, I, I would imagine. Life so. be different on the border town, dude. Um, and I didn't realize that until like later on, where I started hearing other people's stories. I was like, "Damn, bro, border town living was wild." Like, <laughs> we were—I was 14, going to the clubs in Acuna, uh, and like they would look at my identification just to let me in. What's the point of even looking at my identification? It was wild. It was a, uh, but yeah. So first time, it was like a deal gone wrong with some homies that I was like just kind of like with. I wasn't the one doing it, and. Uh, Things escalated, and I ended up knowing the guy. His name was Jonathan. He was like, I'm sorry, Ozzy. Pulled out a gun on me for only $70 worth of weed. Only $70 worth of weed. God damn. That was another one where I was in a situation where it was like a... Were you scared? Oh, for sure. But, you know, wild thing is that we ended up going back, and then I ended up getting in trouble uh, being the nicest guy in the group because, like, some situations led to the creation of Molotov cocktails. Are you guys familiar with what those are? It's a weapon of mass destruction, legally. And uh, so uh, so two of them were made. A shotgun was grabbed by another homie of mine. And uh, we went back looking for him for $70, bro. For $70. Um, and uh, we ended up going to the backyard of these dudes who I thought wasn't them, but we later found out that they were housing them. Um, one of my buddies ended up getting his Molotov pulled out of his hand and the gas was poured on him. My but my other buddy was in like the weeds, like waiting for my word to kind of like shoot the shotgun if if we were in trouble. And I was like, these aren't the guys. These aren't the guys. Uh, cops shortly after get involved. They end up busting us for the fact that like the car was parked obscurely, and I left my Molotov in there because I wasn't trying to make anyone blow up. I just wanted to fight people with my fist, even if they had guns, you know. At least, and uh, because I left it in there, they had evidence that we had them at all. So. Uh, that was almost a third degree felony charge for me when I was 16. Jesus. Uh, so, and they tried trying me as an adult because I was so good of a student. Uh, so I like knew what I was doing. I ended up spending some time in juvie and a few days uh, elsewhere in like this kind of like kind of scare tactic. Like you could potentially come to actual prison. Like some beyond scared straight. Yeah, shit. yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, and there's some wild stories about the juvie times too because I was with someone who was like, 
like pyrotechnic dude who had burned down three houses. There was this other person who was like, there's some, there was some crazy stories. <laughs> there was some crazy stories. But that was my first time getting pulled at gunpoint. You know, second time was, uh, there was like an ounce involved like, um, back in the day. And there's, yeah, just three dudes came out gunpoint. Uh, and I was like, I'm good. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how I react to somebody pulling a gun at me. Yeah, it was wild. I really don't know. It was wild. So I said three times, correction, two times. I've only been held at gunpoint twice. You got to do that rush hour move. Or, I, don't, yeah. I, mean, I just don't know how I would, like, I think I'd be so mad that like, you better kill me. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. angry? Yeah, I think like, you can pull it out. You better kill me. You better fucking kill me. Yeah. God damn. Yeah. Second time, I was just like, go. Yeah. That's not a threat. Hey. That's not a some for for you people listening. Don't do that. Please. <laughs> don't do that. Fuck yeah, that. Gang, gang. Yeah, I got some. A lot, but yeah, I've also been punched in the face. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, a lot of people need to. Maybe in a controlled manner, like I'm saying. Man, I get because I have been punched, and it, there's only one time I was in a controlled manner. It's like, oh, that's a different game. Yeah, yeah, different yeah. Game. Like, for all right. sure, dude. We're, we're here getting and getting choked out and you just you're like, oh, all right. You're not as tough as you thought you were. Dude, getting <laughs> getting hit aggressively with like actual intent behind it is a completely different yeah. like a, a completely different experience. Cause some people can't even fathom that people would get that mad. Like some people can't even fathom like I don't know if this is like an early I don't know if it's just like a Mexican thing or a border town thing, but like one of the first things that was taught early on that I like understood was like respect in terms of like if you disrespect <laughs> me, then I have to fuck you up. If you if you respect me, I respect you. Uh so yeah, so if someone crossed the line, I'm like, we have to fight now. <laughs> and so I got into many, many, many fights as a kid. At least like 12, 14. I've lost two and then I've got jumped twice. Damn. Uh, it's like, it's funny because it, in my current aggression, like I just don't take any shit. Like I remember I, w I went to this one space once at like a club and this guy comes and I, I was with like, my group of friends were kind of like pretty passive aggressive people. This dude comes in and is like, we were sitting there and literally every other seat is open. And he's like, we were sitting there and like my friends immediately were like, oh, we're sorry, we'll get up. And I was like, no, 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 we're not getting up right now. Um, and I was like, bro, you could literally sit anywhere else. And it took everything I had to not hit them with that fifth grade line of like, I don't see your name on it. You know, you know, you know what I mean? Because like literally, why are you picking on us, you know? And it was just some drunk dude just trying to like just trying to be alpha I know, you are. I know you are but what am i yeah i know dude that's sort of, and which is an auto victory when you bring that up in an <laughs> argument you know what i mean but like yeah it took it, like literally that was like the initial thought that came to my mind i was like i don't see your name on it bro <laughs> <laughs> could you take me seriously at that point but that dude listened he knew what's up he knew what's up uh oh so, man yeah. ozzy we've had a good time talking to you yeah like to have you back on in the future if you want. Yeah, man. We have so much fun. It's so a good time, fun. man. You got anything else for the people out there? Uh, let's see. Adding me on Instagram would probably be the best way. Did I throw that handle on there? Yeah, Maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, Oz, O-Z, Saints, uh, S-A-I-N-T-S, and the number 13. Yeah, I put everything up there from my yoga to the wedding officiant stuff to some dance videos that I put up there. Uh yeah, yeah. Find me out there. And the Spotify playlist. Oh, you do, man. We talked about that last time. Yeah, we didn't even touch music, bro. Like, No? Yeah, we man. can do that next time, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'll, I'll put those playlists out there, too. They're actually in one of my highlights on Instagram. That's just called Music Taste. So I'll keep that updated for sure. Hell yeah, man. Thank you all. Thank you, man. Bradley? Deuces. Jennifer? Uh, follow me at Hella Soft. Follow me at Texas Chainsaw uh, Alchemist. Um, when is this coming out? Uh, next week, probably. If this is out before Tuesday. Oh, uh, no, it won't be out before Tuesday. <laughs> well, since this is out after Tuesday, thank you for coming to our screening of Dracula. Yeah. Bram Stoker's Dracula? Bram mm -hmm. Stoker's Dracula. There you go. R. Sexiest R. vampire movie. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. We, so we for, have to put that. So for anybody that hasn't guessed it by now, this is for Toby Keith. I don't think anybody was literally paying attention to this Red Solo Cup so far. Red Solo Cup. We mentioned Cup. it at the very first. Thanks, Ozzy. Let's Appreciate you, brother. Party. We'd like to have you back on the conversation pit if you want to come back on. Mm. Oh, That's yeah. exactly what I want to do. Oh, yeah.